Hey everyone, you're watching The Rap Report, How to Get Away with Murder, episode 13, Mama's Here Now. Well, you guys, let's just jump right into this episode, because I know that we have so much to talk about, specifically Miss Cicely Tyson, Annalise's mom. Arguably, the entire episode orbited around her mom and, and everything that we discovered. So let's just jump right in. You know, do you guys kind of have some first thoughts about whether or not you were surprised. I know, Bam, you have a little secret for us, which we did not allow you to disclose a couple episodes about. So do you want to kind of start there, Bam? Yeah, so that was the big surprise, was that Cicely Tyson was playing Annalise's mom, which you guys refused to let me tell you, and I've been dying to tell someone, but that was that was the big shocker, was that she... Uh, uh, she she was the mom, and they they shot it um they shot it back in early December, early December ish. Um, they shot that episode, so um, I, I knew since then. Um, my only problem with that is, I thought it was a miscast. Oh my God, Sam, ex explain for us why did you think it was a miscast? Because Annalise's character is she's early forties, forty two to forty four years old. Okay. Cicely Tyson is old. She's 81. Then, in addition to her already being old, they dressed her up even older with the gray wig, the whole slowish kind of moving. And so it was more like a grandma. Ooh, Camila, you got the hand up like in church. Ooh, like I got the hand up. Let um, me tell you. Keep on, Bam, and let me know when you're done. So it was a miscast because it looked, she looked like a grandmother versus her mother. I'm done. Okay. I don't think it was a miscast because if you hear the Cicely Tyson's character talk, if you hear the story that she tells, she's from a culture and a part of the country or an area where the living is hard. This whole concept of black women aging, well, that popped off and started with baby boomers and now it's trickling down. But you had people whose parents were sharecroppers they finished third grade only. They only got to go to school half of the year. I'm not saying that's Cicely Tyson's character and, and her in this example. However, I think it was cast perfectly because the stuff that she was talking about, how she saved the money to buy the house that they got to live in, that is realistic to them, the type of family. And I'm just speaking from my grandmother and her peers. They look old. When they were like 50, they looked old, they, they felt old, and it's the same example for my father. My dad is 60, and in his mind, 60 is really old because when his parents were 60, they were old. They looked old, they, had, they lived hard, it was just a different type of living and upbringing. So I think they cast it perfectly because what other actress could they cast to play in like, to play by the day to day's mom? Somebody who's, somebody who's uh, younger. But I get what you're saying, though. I get what you're saying. So, Peter, what do you think? And, and I, I, I'm kind of right in between with both of you. I actually very much agree with what you're saying, and I think that what it shows the, the strength of spirit, right? So, for instance, you're thinking to yourself that Emily's mom is probably going to be more like an older Lynn Whitfield type, right? A little bit older, but not as old, right? But I think that making her Cicely, Cicely type, making her look the way that she did, it gave you a little bit of an insight into her background. That she doesn't come from the background. She does have an old mom who, just like Camelia said, possibly actually picked cotton. Like, I think that sometimes we forget because we're in 2015 and we're now in this quote unquote, quote, integrated great dialogue that even as an athlete, there is still so many. Black women specifically out, but still live the life of slavery, i.e., they still pick cotton in the same way that their ancestors did previously. So, therefore, it was a definitely it was a hard life, number one. Number two, and I don't mean this to be funny, it's not like she's she, she, like, like baby, 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 baby. So, at the end, the end of the day, the real, real thing, speaking like a real, real boy. And I think the real. Versus the strength of spirit she had, and arguably she's the only person we've ever seen go toe to toe with Annalise in the way that we just saw her do. That I think that enough suspicion was necessary to really know that Annalise really is small on some levels, and not small in a way that diminishes her, but small in the same point that 
she's just a real human being. She's a real human being with a real mother, and she's a real human being who still is looking for protection from her mother, and a real human being who, who is still, in the very genesis, a child. And I think that's kind of what Cicely Tyson's character even aesthetically symbolized. <laughs> but let's back up just a little bit. And, and, and we're, we're guys are from, and it obviously means that Emily is going to have to make a decision between whether or not she was going to protect herself, whether or not she was going to protect the students, or some other option. And the option that she chose was to set up me. Were you guys surprised by that, first of all? And then were you surprised about how she physically reacted to that decision? I was surprised, but I wasn't shocked once she did it. And I was just sad for him. Like, you never think that when you, you know, you, you're cheating on your wife, that the woman that you're cheating with, one, is going to get you fired from your job, then two, is going to pin the murder of her husband on you. It was just, it made me really sad. It, w it was really sad. But... Annalise seems like a really emotional person. So the way she reacted, I wasn't surprised because, you know, she did what she had to do when she told the students that she would protect them. What her plan is in the long run, we'll see. But it was just, man, that was sad. When they showed up at his door and then they said, you know, you're in the arrest for the murder of Sam Keaton, I was like, man, see, it really, I felt some kind of way about it. I'm not going to lie. You know, I think that either Sam is just a real cool cat and OG, or he knew this was coming. You mean um, her mm -hmm. boyfriend? Uh, yeah, uh, the boyfriend. I'm sorry. Yeah, he's he didn't seem unfazed. He didn't seem he seemed like he knew this was coming, and as if he knew to play along, because I would be pissed. If Say that again, ma'am, for us. I don't know if we're having technical difficulties. Okay, interesting. So I, 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 said, I said the way he was so poised, he was so cool, he didn't break a face. I feel that anyone who's being set up would have reacted a little bit differently, but he was so cool about it that I think he, he knew that he would be set up. It's a no, that's, that's an excellent point, Van, that I didn't realize when I initially watched it. I just thought, like, oh, he's a cool cat. But no, you're right. Like, it's almost like he knew like, that was that the play. play. But do, did, did you feel that Annalise had no other choice? Or do you think that it actually is making her more maniacal? Especially given the fact that it seemed like, like Nate was definitely trying to be there for her. Nate, Nate didn't care whether or not she killed her husband. Nate basically was saying, like, you know, I'm going to I'm gonna be there for you. I'm going to protect you. Kind of did it make you feel differently about Annalise? Or were you kind of like, well, you know, Annalise that we all want her to be? And this was the, the card that we thought she was going to play. I definitely feel different about Annalise, but I've said this a couple of, a couple of recaps ago. I think she's fucking crazy. Okay. She's loony. She's crazy. She's emotional. And she will do anything to not only protect her, but really those kids, particularly Wes. Okay. okay. Well, okay, so okay, honestly, at this moment, so after she, you know, basically <laughs> played places <laughs> on me, and this is when my mind, you know, is breaking down. When the police came into the house and informed her that, that Sam was actually dead, you know, yeah, Hannah went there, and Hannah breaks down, Annalise doesn't break down. Hannah, you know, screams, arrest her, she killed my brother, she kills my brother, she still doesn't break down. However, moments after handing over Nate, Annalise basically goes into the fetal position. She she literally can't get out of bed, she isn't bathing, she she literally cannot, she's depressed. Were we surprised that that was triggered arguably by her turning in Nate, or do you think it's just that's when everything became real to her, including the fact that her husband was dead? 
I don't. I wasn't surprised at that because we got to remember she already broke down about Sam when she spent the holidays, Christmas and New Year's Eve alone. Okay. So she broke down with that. Like when we saw his sister break down, that was her first breakdown. And Elise already knew that his body was chopped up and thrown in the dumpster. She already probably took place when she was alone during the holidays, which is the hardest time of the year when you're alone. She went through that. So when she didn't break down when the police came to her house, I wasn't surprised because she, you know, she probably already went through the motions. She could have faked it. I think she could have whipped up some tears or she could have let, let out a scream. You know, she could have did something like that. But, you know, but <laughs> I think when she got in the fetal position and it was depressed about Nate, I think I think it was because now she really doesn't have anybody. Yeah, Nate was her boyfriend, and, you know, who knows if she really loved him like she loved her husband. But you, she just threw the last dude that was going to fool with her under the bus. So she is in it. She's on this path by herself. She doesn't have anybody, and it sucks. And, okay, and I mean, you, that's a perfect segue. And, and do we think that's why she reached out and called her mom and basically was like, Mama, I need you? Because at this moment in time, she realizes that she has nobody in her corner that she can turn to. Yeah. Yes. Yep. Well, can I just say the way that the mom rolled into the house, regardless of whether or not she was mis miscast or not, the way that she rolled in the house and kind of was like, um, do y'all just leave your door open? Like, you know what I mean? And then they try to basically say like, oh man, we're not taking any cases. And she's like, um, do you not know I'm a VIP? And they're like, VIP? And then she's like, yeah. Anna came from my V and her daddy. <laughs> I don't know if I'm just a dork, but I thought that that was absolutely hilarious. And I think spoke to, again, you know, arguably the mother of Annalise Keating could only be that amazing and just walk into this, you know, rich people's house, this fancy house, as she kept saying, and command um, everyone's attention and basically order everyone around. Mm -hmm. Well, I, now let me, let me say this. I thought it was a miscast visually. Okay. But Cicely Tyson played the hell out that role and I can I can only imagine that when they I'm, I'm assuming that they asked her to play the mother first before a role was written. And then once they knew that it was Cicely Tyson, they got the best writers. They probably locked themselves in a room for like five days and they was like, Yo, listen, Cicely Tyson is about to play this mom. Y'all don't come out that writer's room until I have the top-notch best dialogue for Mrs. Tyson. Because everything, every word she said, I mean, she just, I mean, she punched you right here. Right here. Um, every scene that Cicely was in, totally, that, that whole storyline about the someone who cares. Who cares? The writing for specifically Annalise and, and Cicely Tyson, that was it. That was the whole show. Yeah, I agree. Sam, 100%. I was literally thinking that you're going to say, oh, my God, she's going to sweep. She's going to sweep all awards for supporting um, actress because the, the, the way that they interacted together, like you actually – for every time when she was in a scene, and specifically in a scene with Annalise, you forgot you were watching a TV show. You were you forgot that they were, you know, Viola Davis and Cicely Tyson. You really felt that it was, and not Annalise, but you really felt like it was Anna May and her mama having a conversation and going at each other. And you, in, in, in them going at each other, you weren't sure if it was from a place of love, a place of hate. Or some combination of both. I'm, gl I'm glad that you mentioned that because what I thought was interesting was Annalise, a.k.a. Anna Mae, she needed her mom. She wanted her mom. But when she was there, she wouldn't be bothered. Completely. I, 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 I think it's also <laughs> Annalise, basically, I think, is a taker. So initially, she did need her because let's, let's go. The minute she walked into the room, 
the way that that her mom read her like oh yeah I've read about you you and your your husband who can't keep his dick in his pants I told you not to marry him and then he goes and sleeps with that white woman and then your boyfriend and then your boyfriend now you don't got nothing like yeah I had my friends Google it right so she's reading her and she's like oh you smell like I don't even know what the line was what did she say you smell like day old something like having babies or something and the way she was trying to pull her out of bed, that love of stand, that to me seemed organic. But then there was that moment where you could tell that Annalise wasn't responding, that it was like in that split second the mom realized tough love wasn't going to work. And that's not what her child needed. And the way that she got in the bed, and the way that she comforted her, and the way that Annalise still basically couldn't move, and all Annalise could do was just kind of slither over and put her head in her mom's lap and wrap her arm around her just to feel some sense of connectivity, that was powerful. However, I think that once she kind of got that, once she got that from her mom, and then her mom really go into the reality of what's happening, that's when Annalise started to put up the, okay, stop, I don't need you anymore, because Annalise didn't really want to look at herself. And then I think that's why then later on in the episode, they really had to kind of have a come to Jesus moment and be like, okay, let's really talk about this. You sit up here in your fancy house. You now redeem yourself. <laughs> and I feel and like you're like, like, completely back. Like, like, I don't care if you're a big time lawyer. I don't care if you live in this rich people's house. You still in And I think that because it really shows, and I think this is where the writers are going, and I'm not sure. I think that they needed to give us some space to feel for Annalise. Even though we don't want to, even though I think that we can see the dynamic of the first one, and I think even though I feel like there are moments when it's so, I think it's still very hard for us to empathize with her. Because she doesn't feel like she has a hard heart. I think I think her interaction with her mom is finding out that the genesis of her being so cold is because her uncle, a family member, abused her, number one. But number two, she thought that her mom was complicit in her uncle abusing her. Is why, basically, she is as cold as she is for a protection. In that moment, it did allow me to feel for Emily for a split second. And I think that's necessary for the whole character and the whole show. To, even though so she no, you're right. right. It was it that, that thing was, was so real. real. The whole thing was so real. Watching it, like you said, you forget it was Cicely Tyson and, and Viola Davis. The whole time I thought it was my mom and my grandmother. The whole time. Like it made me it made, it made me, me so me. mad. Like I was just really feeling that this whole dynamic between them. It just made me. It just it it really sat in yeah. on me. And I was watching it. I was like, because this it's that's a real that's a real generational gap. Where something that happens, happens to your child and you feel like you don't have to discuss it with her because the same thing happened to you. And you survived, so you're like, it happened to me. Oh well, so what? We survived. Like it was just so real. I was watching, and I was like, I, I, for me, um, I was mentally taking notes. Um, it, it was a great story. I wasn't. I was so moved by the acting that my perspective is a little bit different. I was literally taking notes, watching. <laughs> as an actor, watching how the inflection of voices, the silence, the say in certain words, I was in, I felt like I was in class. Like you were having a class? Yeah, I felt like I was totally in class to see those two interact with each other. Um, it was really, it was really good, but <clears throat> looking at it from the, from the, from the story's perspective, I agree with you, Sophia, you know, um, you got to see within a weekend, I guess, that she was there, you got to see the dynamic of the relationship, why they sometimes hate each other, 
why they sometimes love each other and how, you know, nobody knows their child better than the parent. Mm -hmm. So she, she, she knew what, uh, um, uh, Cicely Tyson knew where, she, she knows her daughter, and she knew that she had to take a different approach. And so <clears throat> she knew she finally had to tell and reveal you know, basically what happened about how she had to set that fire of her house. I mean, I thought that was a very important oh, sequence nice. of, of saying, you know, basically, um, you know, it happened to me. And so how I reacted to it was the house that I saved up for. Mm -hmm. I burnt it. And I, and I left his ass in there and he burned. I mean, that's, that's pretty, that's, that's not only powerful, but that's that says a lot because Anna Lee Stan had to somewhat let her she had to let her feelings go of how she felt for her mom because she's like, Well, damn, it happened to you, mom. Not only did it happen to you, but you gave up the house that you saved up for. You burned it and then the man who did what happened to you that happened to me, you left him in it and you burnt it. Like, think about that for a second. I, I, you know. No, I think I think the damn is extremely powerful. Like, like that moment, moment that, that he arguably it completely redefined it. Because she said to her mom, you know, Sam knew. Sam knew everything about me. Sam knew this is why I am the way that I am. And again, that's why it's harder. It's not just that her uncle was sexually abusive. It's also that she had this entire time thought about her mom not only but what's good and didn't get it to her. One, one mother revealed that not only did her mom, yeah, yeah, that her mom, mom, mom pulled her out of and then do it so completely burned down their house, and that's then arguably why they had to depend on others, others and, and take clothes from the from the church hand me downs. I thought that was very powerful because what I was is that her mother not only protected her but was willing to sacrifice anything in order to protect her. And therefore, just like you said, Bam, there was a certain level of resentment that not only needs to let go, but there was a certain aspect of the, 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 way she, the way she is that arguably now she has to look at from a different perspective because her reality has now, now in fact shifted. Go ahead, Bam. And, and, and not only that, but. You know, as much as Annalise wanted to change herself, she wanted to remove herself from the family, the situation to be better. She, her mom, the reason that Annalise is, is so strong and so headstrong is because of your mama, girl. It's not because it's not because you decided to become this new person and change your name. No, you're you're strong because your mom is strong. Your mom is strong for the fact that she left everything she had to try to you know so she's just like her mom and I think she realized that in that whole weekend that her mom was there completely and, and, and this, this show is giving you a plate plate that it's actually a hard hard to actively <laughs> like what they are doing what they are doing what they are doing about the entire scene where Annalise takes off her face and her wig. But I but think, I think that this last scene with her mom and her mom basically combing her hair, I'm not, I'm not sure all of the viewers kind of comprehend the importance of that scene. And I'll, I'll talk to you as a black woman. When you think of that as going back to child, someone do it to your hair, you know how their cultures kind of do their hair. That's something that I remember whether or not you're my mom or my aunt or my grandma, where you would sit in between their legs and they would comb your hair and they would talk and they would tell you stories and, and it was loving it at the time sometimes it was the way they would sit on your hair, but at the same time it was also loving and think about it, you're, you're sitting kind of on the womb of your mother or your maternal figure. And I think that's kind of what a certain aspect of combing someone's hair is through several cultures, the African cultures, where we're braiding one's hair, combing one's hair in a circle. It's kind of the unity of women and the unity that kind of that bond that women have, specifically that bond 
that you have mother to daughter. And I think that's what it was symbolizing in the actual placement of where they were. And I think that's why she was able, as her mom, yeah. this yeah. Moment, her mom yeah. this yeah. they could have yeah. been, they could have yeah. been too aggressive, too aggressive. Sitting in that posture, yeah. that posture, yeah. that posture, yeah. yeah. was actually yeah. actually being yeah. felt yeah. for her, and why yeah. she was able to, you know, what she had to do as her mom. I, I felt that that scene was so necessary, and you know I did make a comment some recaps ago about stop taking your wig off and stop having your hair look like Kushan Jada forgot to kill him. <clears throat> I'm gonna slightly backtrack on that because we're in a generation where these things doesn't happen. Um, they don't happen. These type of conversations don't happen. <clears throat> and how often do you see? kids getting their hair, their natural hair combed. We're, yeah, we're yeah. in a society now where everybody has to be made up, overly made, with a lot of makeup. You have, I listen, you you listen to, to the radio stations and you hear nothing about, you hear only about plastic surgery and breast augmentations and all these things to make yourself better versus being the natural who you are. And <clears throat> I think it's great that they have this important scene. So I'm going to slightly take back what I said. I think it's actually important that we see these kind of scenes because I'm going to I'm going to speak out of turn and say this prob you know this probably doesn't happen anymore because you know you got girls who are 12, 13 year old who are wearing makeup and who are wearing extensions and hair weaves and clip-ons and all this other stuff and not being taught the the natural you know essence of your beauty and who you are and so it 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 was very powerful it's important and I'm glad that it was seen on prime time because I don't think these gender I don't think these little young kids they don't know what it feels like to have your natural scalp greased they don't they don't know anything about it but get that grease out the cabinet yeah. No, I mean, I mean, well, I, mean I, I, can't, I can't, I can't, well said. All right, well, 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 but let's move on to, to kind of how, how the story is going to be the fact that, that Sam's Sam body is now number one. Number one, 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 two, two, three, 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 West, we kind of have to figure out how this movie is going to And does some research and finds out that Rebecca was actually the person who was popped. And that's why he went away. And she had never disclosed that. Of course not. I said that Wes has been a complete chicken head over this girl. I don't know why. Um, I'm sorry, but I, I knew she, I knew she was guilty, or she. You can't trust that girl. Yeah, yeah. I, agree. I agree. He poured, he poured everything, everything in his in girl. girl. Like, come, like, on, come bro. on, bro. You don't even know her. her. She came off real weird, like anti-social. Anti like he didn't even he know what she was telling him about, about what happened with Lila was, was true. true. But he was he mad for her all the time. Like, like, she's innocent, guys. You have to really believe in her. I believe in her. She's great. He got PW'd, and now he went balls to the wall for this thing. But now, he find out that old boy is psycho, and she knew about it the whole time. I just can't. He... he Wes never had a girlfriend. He could not have ever had a girlfriend or had anybody in his life that you had to step step and give a like that. Because I would have been like, it's something about you that's a little weird. And I would have been with him. And she got a little tracker on his phone? Well, get out of here. She's nuts. I wish. 
I wish that Annalise would have kind of used her motherly instincts and said, leave that girl alone. Cause but the funny thing is, I think I think she tried, but then I think that once she realized that what she got to listen to her, uh -huh. she needed to make sure that what was about that was enough with her, her that Wes went to tell her what Rebecca was doing, and, and, and Wes went to control of control of Rebecca. I knew that she knew that that was futile. I think it's, it's kind of just like a mother. I think the minute you tell your child not to see the same one, it's exactly when your child decides, like, oh my goodness, I'm going to speak my teeth into them. And possibly that's when there's a threat. That's usually why I like, like, their family. They're 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 family. they are and I think that was going and Wes was living to himself. Oh my oh god. I had to have to before that. None of this would have happened. None of this would have happened. They would have been thinking about her back would be in jail. Sam would still be alive. Everything would be cool. And it would just be him being really out of time. Up for charge. Her friend, not that. You're right. You're right. And this is one of the first times that I agree with Bam in the use of the word chicken head. Wes is definitely a hood rat. He's a hood rat. Like, why are you doing this? Oh my god. Let's move on. 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 Let's Anybody, anything because it's plausible deniability. Or do you think to know? Oh, 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 oh. He actually is the only one who has to get ahead. Because of that, that you know what's going on in order to protect the others, too. I think, I think it's generational. Um, versus, I'm just not that, I'm just, you know, contrary to what many may think, I'm just simply not that nosy. And, you know, I was taught that if someone don't tell, you don't ask. But you're in a, we have a generation now where everyone feels entitled to always want to know something. You watch, you know, you look at any TV shows, you look in the, in, the work, in the workplace, everybody just talks everybody's business. And it's just, you know, you, everybody feels they always have a right to know something. That's why we have social media, we have Twitter, we have Instagram. You know, we, we want to know every ounce of detail about every celebrity at every time. So it's not a shocker that she wants to know everything, not realizing that she needs to shut up, she needs to mind her business, and you don't need to know everything. Well, I'm going to play devil's advocate for her. It is her business because whatever they're doing affects her. So if Frank does something and it backfires, it could eventually turn back and reveal her and her crew and what they did. So yeah, she should let you know fall back a little and let him do what he's doing. But if I murder somebody and my fate was left up to you and Annalise, my teacher, I will be like, what's going on, dude? Somebody tell me. What's going on so I can go to sleep at night? I, I get that, but... They're at the bar. They're at the bar meeting Con uh, meeting Connor's boyfriend. They're talking about it. They're whispering. They outside. They walk in. They talk and they're whispering. Shut up! That's true, that's true. You're right. So people can hear you. You're right because when they were at the bar, I was like, aren't they talking a little loud? Then what's his name? The, the boy who's messing messing with Bonnie. Oh my God! I want to kill him. Just shoot him in there. He gets on my nerves. Now all of a sudden, you think you got swag. You trying to talk with urban slang all the time. Um, you you making comments in public. Um, um, last week they were in class before class started, and what's his name is making a comment to Wes, calling him a, a killer. Um, you don't think that people are already whispering in class because you're the bad guy? Doesn't know that they're actually killers. Asher's the only one who wasn't in on the murder. The Asher's dumb, entitled self. He's joking. Right, but I'm, I'm sorry. I'm cross-referencing because I'm, I'm, I'm speaking of both of them. Okay. Asher, Asher needs to shut up, period, because he gets on my nerves. Connor, <laughs> when they were in the classroom before class started, he goes up to Wes, and he was like, hey, what's up, killer? Like, 
you guys are in a classroom. You already people are already looking at you because you're the fat five and that your honor least is favored. If I was someone who was not a part of that clique, I would be ear hustling every chance I get so that I can drop the dime on you so that I can become a part of that clique. Shut up. They need to shut up. Sam, I agree with you a hundred percent. But I'm gonna be definitely advocate for the bigger like, 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 like I'm gonna murder murder and then literally talk about it. Like, However, I think, I think a lot of people are about, about the line on the yep, yep. I, think I think we always have to remember one element. So, are they're like 22, 23, 24 max. <coughs> In the context of this show, they're not seeking for a They are children who, because of Anna is such a Grammy god, it's almost like they're a little bit old. They follow her and they and drink, drink the weed, and now they're like, oh, so we drank the egg, the egg, the egg, what the heck, and they're like, oh, you know what I mean? So I think that, that you almost have to, it's almost, almost for them to be reacting in this way, because they're not seasoned killers, they're not, and our party, they're not an attorney. So they're just they're, they're 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 Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I think I may have just dropped the mic on my own, so I'll move on really quickly. <laughs> I guess the only other last person I want to talk about, because I think it feeds into into the, and we can then wrap that right up. What do you think about how Michaela specifically is reacting to everything? And more importantly, the fact that, you know, she got this information out of uh, the prosecutor or the prosecutor <coughs> intern or whoever he may be. I'm not sure she showed up. Do you think that that was good because it was in fact Annalise informed given the fact that Annalise hadn't gotten out of bed? Or do you think she's stirring up trouble and the only way they potentially could get out of murdering Sam is that someone else has to go down to that I think she's stirring up trouble and I think the fact that they showed her meeting up with the prosecutor, I don't think they will just leave that out there linger like that. Because once her ring is discovered, because they didn't leave the ring out there for nothing, stuff is being left out in the open so that it can eventually come back. So she was asking about, you know, the case. You know, she was trying to put that off. Like it wasn't, her name wasn't Michaela and she was being flirty. Once the ring comes up and then the prosecutor remembers that she specifically asked for the ring, ring, like ring, ring like that is ring like that is I just feel like I all of these like all this I'm going to come to her for some reason. Because she's the only one everybody else is worried, but she's the only one digging into it. She's really <laughs> digging into it. Okay. So I think she's setting herself up for trouble. I just, I just I think she should have my advantage. Specifically about the and and and, and, and wrap, wrap, wrap. it seems that, and we've talked about this before, that Annalise specifically picked all of these kids for a reason, right? And that our, our, you know, she said that her and um, and Connor was were similar because they're both warriors, right? And arguably her and Michaela are alike because they both had initial identity, right? I mean, me, they, they're not, they're not as polished or refined or from an independent privileged background. Do we think that there is something in Michaela's background that hasn't been put on? So, for instance, if you fast forward and they find the ring and they run down who she really is, do we think that there's something in her past that she is afraid of different than the thing Absolutely. If you think about it, she's like a young Annalise because, you know, she's not who she is. She's changed parts about her life and her background to become better. She's found a little young. She's found a little young boy who's of, of upper class. Like she's literally she's clawing her way to the top. The only problem with 
with uh, the Michaela storyline is I felt it was unrealistic that some girl <laughs> and this guy's just gonna all of a sudden give up all this information on one date and he is smash. That's not realistic. Sometimes unrealistic. you don't gotta give up the draw, man, to get the info. It was, but it was too easy. That that was too easy. She didn't slip like she didn't slip anything in his drink. I mean, it was the easy, that, that was too easy. Come on, y'all gotta admit. That no, was no, no, no. Too I, really jumping whenever you want. I think it just shows you the power of feminine. Why? Why is that? It's the power of. So whenever someone makes you feel powerful, and we didn't go into it, and we'll go into it more offline, well, it's, it's more of Bonnie. Bonnie trying to find a podcast that is important. You know what I mean? I think he was doing the same thing. And here you have this beautiful, attractive young woman flirting with him. With all all and I don't mean to disrespectful, but no one's like, again, kind of going back to our cultural and our generational conversation, we're kind of living with it now that it's all about this little level of lifestyle, all the more very very And we're not as as he's playing right back to 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 and he's just going to fit into it. Why? Because he thinks then by divulging, he is going to get it. So I think it actually was very believable. I think it was very believable, and arguably also too, it was a it was a direct going toe to toe with Connor. Connor is going to get the information. Get the information. I just need to see this like actually the full nine yards. Nine yards. All right. <laughs> so how do you guys think, like, let us kind of start to wrap it up. So the final scene where Anna Lena goes and, and, and confronts me, and then you hear, you know, the phone number. What do you guys think? Is Annalise setting him up, or is Annalise still trying to protect me? At this point, I think the well, number is a direct line to the electric chair. Because, electric chair. because the only thing left to do with him is kill him. Because she got him fired, she got him locked up. <laughs> And let's and not forget, he's, he's in prison, prison. he's a cop, in prison. So his so state in jail is more dangerous than an average, average criminal. criminal. Because he's police officers, detectives, anybody who is a law enforcement in a law enforcement position, they are frustrated in jail. So she already put in a situation. situation. Like, in a way, what's the number? Who is, who is, who is it? it? Because it's, 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 everything she does for him, it ends up hurting him and helping her. I agree, uh, I agree with you, Cornelia, but good point, but I'm going to disagree because, again, watch Sam's body language. He didn't flinch, he didn't move. He sat there with his hands already clasped, like he already knew what was going to go on. She leaned in making sure that the camera can only see a certain part of her, blah, 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 she said, and then slipped the paper. He looked at it like they're, they're, they're in it together, I think. They're in it okay, together okay. because... No, wait, wait, wait. Let's explain, like, 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 Wait, yeah. wait. The second fingerprint? What happened? Wait, what? No, no, no. Think about it. There's only one fingerprint, fingerprint on his brain. And it's How is anyone going to explain that? Because to me, that was. Like, that was. That was me. How is anyone going to explain that Nate's Nate fingerprint is the only fingerprint on his brain found in the same wood that is going to be back to the wood side of it that they found out on his body? It's called how to get away with murder. And that's exactly how we're going to figure out and learn how Nate has got away with murder. Nate is also the second bill, meaning starring um, uh, Viola Davis, then starring whatever his name is. Billy, said, yeah, yeah. Billy Brown. He's, he's second billing. So they're going to teach us how to get away with murder, how to set this whole thing up, and then how he's gonna how he's gonna get off. 
I do not believe that he's going down for this. It's gonna something's gonna happen. He's gonna walk away scot free. The kids are gonna the kids are gonna be set free, and we're gonna think at the end of the season that everything is hunky dory. And then season two, something's gonna happen that's gonna resurface this whole thing back up. I mean, I mean, I love it. I'm gonna win it right there. I got nothing to say, ma'am. So let everyone know where they can reach you so that they can continue the conversation, and then we will have an absolutely amazing round up for the chart presentation. Correct? We're doing a chat with Sally Sally Sally. Tell everyone, ma'am. You can um, you can catch me on all social media at Bam Erickson, and you can find me on all social media at Canelia. and you can find me at, on all social media at Sophie Okay. Thank you so much, everyone, everyone out there for watching or to get away with murder.